thought, let's talk about the new Gillette ad. I thought, uh, I mean, look, it didn't really upset me, you know what I mean? Because I'm a bit of an alpha, alpha male, and um, one of the first things is, uh, with alpha males, is you don't buy into a victim narrative. You know, you don't buy into the idea that you're oppressed, that everything, you, everywhere you go, that you're this great um, victim of oppression. I know this disagrees with a lot of the uh, cultural Marxist narrative, because uh, I think there are alpha males in society, but there are also alpha females. I think there are many women in society who, who are pretty successful. Um, I've been lucky enough to date a few over the years, and uh, I've noticed other male friends of mine have dated them, and I've also noticed them within all, all areas of, of our community. There are alpha females out there that have no need for this victim narrative, that there's somehow this this victim of this kind of patriarchal oppression that seems to be everywhere, which is just uh, appears to be a, a load of nonsense. It's been a very interesting week in Melbourne. Um, it, was a, it was a terrible tragedy, um, actually not far from where I live, actually, um, in Bandura. There uh, was a um, awful uh, incident where an Israeli student um, was followed home by an attacker um, and, um, and she was uh, basically sexually assaulted, mutilated and killed. And uh, we didn't know who it was for a couple of days, and the police were obviously doing their job. And in the interim, between they found when they found the suspect, and um, uh, and when and when and when you know when the incident happened, um, Clem Ford wrote this you know kind of piece for I don't know, I imagine it was the Age, um, some cultural Marxist newspaper, and said, oh, this is the fault of the white male patriarchy, and of course began to label everyone. I mean, it's really quite absurd the kind of logic that Clem Ford uses. I mean, it's very similar to the kind of logic that she might accuse someone of being racist. She might say, oh, well, I don't know, say some ethnic minority commits a crime and therefore everybody within that ethnic community is guilty of that crime. I mean, I'm sure she would agree that that logic is nonsensical. Um, and I even think most people on the new right um, and even on the alt right to some extent would say that's a pretty nonsensical argument, that there are good people in all communities and, and there are bad people in all communities and that probably good people outnumber the bad, you know, or at least people who are really not up to much or not doing anything would, um, would outnumber the, uh, the bad people, for example. So this kind of strange logic, she, you know, she always pushes that and, and she used that kind of logic of you're either on our side or you're not, like pick a side, which uh, was something that um, was a tactic that George W. Bush of all people used after September 11. He said, well, you're either with us, you know, you know, or you're against us, which is you're either with the terrorists or you're against us. So she's using this almost kind of fascistic logic, which is, of course, the exact opposite of the kind of politics she, she promotes, which is all part of her general hysteria and the absurdity of her own beliefs. But anyway, um, so it turned out that this, this tragedy was, was committed by um, uh, an Aboriginal Australian. Um, obviously, you, you instantly... Um, I, I was following various threads. I, am like, I don't know how, but I'm still friends with some um, left-wing people and some feminist people on Facebook. I don't know, either they tolerate me or I tolerate them. We tolerate each other, I guess. And we sometimes get into little arguments and stuff. And I did get deleted from uh, somebody's thread just, uh, just, just today, actually. So congratulations to me. But what happened was, um, you know, this, this whole dialogue you know, began uh, about blaming. Well, what really upset me is because obviously uh, when the, uh, there was like the perp walk, they filmed the perp. He was, uh, he looked like he could have been possibly Indian or Pakistani when because they, they just had a brief shot of him going past. But it turned out he was an Aboriginal Australian who had been on the, um, he'd been a sex offender before and he'd been on the police watch list. So everybody was kind of shocked about that. And then Darren Hinch revealed information that after the sexual assault, he attempted to, well, he did something horrible. I think he tried to set her on fire in her genitals area to get away with the, um, the crime, which is absolutely horrific thing, um, and, you know, to, to do, obviously to do, but really even really to, to report about. But I guess Darren Hinch uh, being a, a strong activist for um, uh, sex offenders, he did report it on his Twitter account. So that kind of went viral a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, so it was a very shocking case. But then what, what began to upset me is I, I began to kind of mock the idea that this was all the fault of the white patriarchy, because I'm not entirely sure how an Aboriginal Australian um, raping, setting on fire and murdering an Israeli student who was at La Trobe University was the fault of the white white patriarchy, I couldn't quite work out the logic of that. And um, so I did argue with a few people um, and it seemed to tie into this debate that was going on with the Gillette ad because this was all happening around the same time. Somehow, I mean, there literally are left wing people online at the moment who are blaming this attack, saying that this Aboriginal gentleman, or not gentleman, this Aboriginal 
original person who clearly is a scumbag, to be perfectly honest with you, who's committed this heinous crime. That this is how you know that the, 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 the white patriarchy had oppressed his culture so much that you know he had lashed out in this, this act of horrid violence. Now, I guess that's an argument the, the the new left can make. I think it's a very unwise argument. I think it's a very untrue argument. But it's a clue. I guess it's an argument they could be prepared to make. Um, and um, I was just essentially mocking um, this narrative on a few different people's threads, and I did get deleted from um, uh, the, the friend of one actress. I won't say who she was. She was somebody I know for a friend who'd acted in a friend's film, and, um, you know, fair enough. I mean, you know, I guess we, I was just trying to have a normal political discussion, which is all I ever try and do. I try and to be very polite. Of course, instantly, um, it um, descended into insults. That's always, I always know when I've won when I'm arguing with somebody on Facebook, when they instantly begin to insult me. Because that means, well, I mean, it's like in any argument, if you and I are having a chat, and you instantly start going, you know what, Richard, you're a bastard. And blah, blah. You instantly know you've won. I mean, in any argument, it's the same online. As soon as they begin to insult you, you've won. And so I remain calm, and I, I, I always take a, and this is an interesting, this is something I recommend people do on the new right, be very almost like a hippie to them. Because that's the way the left used to be. Like, you know, interested in peace, and, and talk about, like, you know, learn some words from, I don't know, Eastern, they've got some books here on Eastern, Eastern philosophy, like Osho, and people like this, you know, like, quite, a, quite Eastern mysticism to them, because it utterly fucking confuses them, you know what I mean? Because these are the people that are supposed to be into, like, peace and love and listening to others, and, you know, but of course they're, they're totally not these days, so, and particularly when you're of a new right persuasion, like I am, it's always good to kind of pepper your conversation with a little bit of Eastern mysticism, because it deeply confuses them, um, and sends a kind of different signal you know, it was a signal that they used to kind of send to people. But anyway, this whole kind of firmament is, I guess, the firmament against the backdrop of which we had the ad, um, the Gillette ad. Um, so what did I actually think of the Gillette ad itself? Um, well, you know, I don't think it's particularly a wise piece of marketing because, I mean, I mean, it was essentially nonsensical. I mean, you know, this the whole boys will be boys thing. I mean, I think men and women are different biologically, and there are clear biological differences between men and women. And someone like an intellectual like Jordan Peterson has clearly pointed out some of those biological differences. Um, he's pointed out that um, women are more agreeable and more, um, more nurturers, more caring uh, at times than men are. And men can be more aggressive. They can be more un uh, disagreeable. I think this is this is true. And that I think when you're a young man, um, you know. Th I mean, you might get into fights with people. I never really got into much fights with people. We were more like building, you know, like uh, tree houses and we were having mock wars. And I mean, occasionally someone threw a stone maybe or whatever and got hurt. But like, you know, there was never a lot of damage. We all managed to survive our childhoods. And I grew up in the 70s. And this is very much the opposite of today's parenting, which uh, is helicopter parenting, where you keep an eye on every single thing. We used to just run out the door at 6 or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. whenever we got lunch, maybe after breakfast, and we'd spend the whole day out running around having a great time. And, uh, and I don't know, maybe every two or three months someone might hurt themselves, you know, and, and then, but, you know, this could be a, a, a young boy or a girl could, could uh, accidentally fall in one of the games that they were involved in and there could be an injury or, you know, sometimes you'd play pranks, you'd ring neighbours' doorbells at night, you'd get up to all kinds of mischief. It was, it was great fun, you know, and um, I don't think any of this is, 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 is a product of toxic masculinity or toxic... Um, even femininity, and uh, I, I really could not make sense of the Gillette ad. It seemed insulting to men, which, as far as I know, men were the main customer of Gillette products. Um, I'm, at least I know I was the main. Uh, I w I've always used Gillette um, products, and I threw them all in the bin this week. And I'm going to go with Chic, or I'm going to go with anybody else except Gillette because I just found it. I mean, as I said, I'm not even a huge men's rights activist. I don't even care about that. But like, if a product deliberately goes out of its way to insult my demographic which is men, um, I think, you know, like anybody, I, I will, you know, I don't know, I think if there was an ad that insulted all women, uh, I think women, or at least some women anyway, would throw that product in the bin. And I think that's fair enough when it comes to Gillette. And then, of course, the other hilarious thing is an old uh, advertising campaign that must have been at a Grand Prix event where Gillette had these um, uh, supermodels all dressed up in, like, uh, blue latex with uh, Gillette. Uh, post it across their backsides, you know, and that's been doing the rounds and you can put a graphic of that online and I'll send you the graphic. I've got a, I've been posting that. So that was Gillette maybe a year or two ago. So the, the accused of this, this toxic masculinity that well, they were more than happy supposedly using this kind of thing to, to market their product a, a year or two ago. I find it all a nonsense. I mean, someone did um, make an interesting comment on my page. They did it for attention. 
And I guess so I'm thinking dialectically about why Gillette would do this. And, and I guess this person is probably of a, a left wing, that they, they did this ad to get attention. And I guess the ad has certainly got attention. So I guess from an advertising perspective, maybe, maybe that is good. You know, I mean, uh, I know myself um, with, uh, with the Melbourne Underground Film Festival, uh, I've caused various controversies that get the festival attention, like the, fe the controversy I had with the lesbian and gay marriage thing. Um, that was absolutely huge controversy and it was amazing. Like we had the biggest year of entries, over 2,000 entries uh, for the festival last year. So, um, you know, sometimes a controversy, even if it appears negative, can actually benefit. Um, uh, maybe um, uh, um, there'll be a spike in, in sales of Gillette. And I guess uh, if that is the case, if, if they do end up selling more product for Gillette um, out of all this and that can of ways, the few um, people who might have been offended by it, or not offended by it, or at least thought, what is this bullshit? You know, like myself, who might chuck their Gillette products, that might outweigh, for example. So in a sense, maybe it does make sense. And I guess we'll have to wait and see in the next month how that plays out for Gillette as a, as a public company. But, um, you know, I, I found the whole thing, you know, just a further extension. And Jordan Peterson warns about this. You know, he, he says that uh, this kind of, um, what does he call it? Neo-Marxist postmodernism. I guess that's his term for cultural Marxism. I've given a talk online for cultural Marxism that you can look up if you just put in my name and cultural Marxism, it'll, it'll turn up. And um, uh, he uh, has given a talk, what he calls neo-Marxist uh, postmodernism. He's very much opposed to that. I'm probably not as radically opposed um, to all that kind of politics. You'll find Derrida over here, a whole collection of books by Derrida. I think there are certainly some suspicious things. i got some Foucault over there behind you. Um, so um, there's certainly some suspicious things about a lot of that politics, but I've always been a firm believer in reading uh, as much as I can about... Um, you know, left and right um, politics and people uh, who are thinkers of all types, philosophers and uh, literary critics and, and stuff, because I attempt, I mean, I find interesting things in all their work. And um, I'm probably not as opposed to uh, people like Foucault and Derrida. For example, um, Foucault's analysis of power, I think definitely is something the new right can use. But Foucault's politics is all about power. And sure, it's all about, all about maybe a left-wing interpretation of power, but, you know, think about it. If we can use... Foucault's ideas against his own politics, which you absolutely can do, um, you could use like a right-wing uh, philosophy of power that's based around some of the ideas of Foucault that could be extremely potent for our movement. So I wouldn't necessarily throw away all your Foucault books. And Derrida, um, Derrida is someone who, uh, well, he invented um, deconstruction, but a few people know that uh, deconstruction itself was based on a, a term called the destruction, a destruction, which is spelled D E S. T-R-U-K-T-I-O-N, from Martin Heidegger. And um, in the documentary about Derrida that I have in the other room, um, he talks about, you know, a lot of his philosophy is essentially footnotes to philosophers like Heidegger and Nietzsche and um, a couple others who he really admired. So there's actually, a, a, there is a right ring connection also to Derrida's thought. Um, and also there's something about the element of truth being subjective um, for example, that I think the right can use, you know, where sometimes I think the left and right have both been accused of fake news. I think when the right possibly puts out something that could be considered fake news, um, you know, maybe we could justify it through some kind of Derridean strategy of truth being relative, you know, and maybe we can send this to Donald Trump and maybe he can start quoting Derrida in his next speech or in his next tweet. You know, I'm sure he'd really enjoy that, particularly when it comes to someone like Michael Cohen or someone like that. So anyway, that's, that's my basic thoughts on this, um, Gillette thing, uh, I think that it, you know, it, it is essentially a load of nonsense. It, it contains a kind of basic theme of misandry, but I don't know, it might, might sell products. I, I think it will, will backfire on them, but we'll wait and see, you know, and, um, you know, um, we'll see if I'm wrong. And, um, you know, if you feel that way, uh, throw out your Gillette products. And if you don't care, just keep shaving with whatever the hell you like. <laughs> I guess that's it.